I will not be finishing the second part of the message I preached last week because um, I learned that God's pretty smart. And so when he says, okay, I want you to go this way, do this, not do that, I tried to listen. And uh, he downloaded another word for me this morning uh, to, to speak to you. So I, I will uh, speak what I believe that God has given to me. And I'm very excited about this word this morning. I believe it will be a word that will bless you and help you and challenge you and comfort you and uh, give directions to you. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that we can be in the house of God, that we can worship you, that we can fellowship with you, fellowship with the saints, hear your word, be strengthened for the journey. We thank you that the word of God will go forth and it will fall on hearts that are ready to receive the word. We just pray for the unction of the Holy Spirit, not only upon me, and upon, but upon the hearers as well. Let your word dwell richly within us and let it produce fruit to the glory of God. We ask in the name of Jesus, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to talk to you about what do you want? What do you want? We all have to decide for our own selves what we really want. God gives to us free choice, and it is up to us to make up our mind. Have you made up your mind? What do you really want? I, uh, I would say if you don't really know what you want, or if you're just kind of drifting for whatever comes into your life and whatever a day may bring, um, that's not a very good way to live. I believe God wants us to have intentionality. I believe God wants us to decide what we want. We do have choices to make in this life. And it's not up to uh, just happenstance or coincidence or whatever just as life comes to us, just to flow with whatever comes. If you, if you allow yourself to have no banks, no borders, no intentions, if you don't take a hold of your life, then life will take a hold of you. Amen. Stuff will take a hold of you. People will take a hold of you. The devil will take a hold of you. And you will not live the life that God has intended for you to live. So what do you really want? What good desire has God given to you? What is it that you are passionate about? I hope you're passionate about something. There should be something that would come to the forefront of our life that we are passionate about. <coughs> there are things that I'm passionate about. My first is the Lord Jesus Christ. My second is the work. I love my family. I'm passionate about my family. I'm passionate about you. I'm passionate about doing what God has called me to do. What is it that you're willing to live and die for? What is it that you're willing to sacrifice for? What is it that you're willing to lay everything on the altar for? Hopefully, you're willing to lay everything on the altar for the glory of God and the, the, the will of God in your life. First of all, for your own salvation. And second, that you may run the race God has called you to do. You can find out what that is. You can find out what specifically God has put it within you. The journey can be And should be in harmony with your calling and your destiny. Yeah. How many of you believe that God created us for a purpose? Yeah. How many of you believe that God has a specific destiny in mind for us and purpose for which he's created us? Yeah. I believe that. Blessed is the person who finds um, a cause that's bigger than himself. 
If we are so wrapped up in just ourselves, our own feelings, our own senses, just living by our senses and what feels good, if we're all wrapped up in ourselves, someone says that we are a pretty small package. I believe that, that God has called us to live for something bigger than ourselves. God wants to give us a cause worth dying for. <coughs> I love my wife. Do you love your life? I get up in the morning and I'm excited about life. I'm excited about what the day is going to bring. I'm excited about the work. Sometimes I feel guilty because it feels like I don't work because I enjoy what I do so much that I would do it anyway. <coughs> Isn't it wonderful if we can find the sweet spot that God's called us to and we can just move right in that sweet spot and flow with God? You say, well, I'm not there yet. Well, get on the path and stay on the path and be faithful in the small things and God will bring you to your sweet spot. I believe that. God wants to show us the reason for which we were created. He wants to reveal the gifting and the greatness which he has placed within each one of us. How many of you believe that? Yes. Some people say, well, I'm just simple. I'm just little old me. You may be little old you in your eyes. But God has great giftings. God has great callings. God has a destiny. For which he has called you to. It would be a sad thing to go through life and not really fulfill your God-given purpose. I, one thing that I purposed in my life is I want to finish well. I don't know when I will finish, but I want to finish well. I want to be like the Apostle Paul who said, I fought a good fight, I've kept the faith, I finished my course. And now I know there is a, cra a crown laid up for me, and not only for me, but all of those who love God's appearing. If we love God's appearing, if we know He is going to appear, then we will be diligent about doing the work that He's given us to do. So it would be a sad thing to go through life and not fulfill our God-given purpose. I believe every one of you in here today, you really want to fulfill your God-given purpose. You see, your God-given purpose suits you. God made you you. God gave you your inside. God knows what's going to fit for you. God wants you to be you. You don't have to try to be somebody else. You don't have to try to keep up with somebody else. You don't have to try to do what somebody else does. But just be the genuine, authentic, great you that God has called you to be. God has put greatness in every one of us. Don't insult God's work by saying you're a nothing and you're a nobody. Amen. Every one of us, we are somebody in Jesus. Amen. And the way to uncover the greatness that's on the inside of you is pull up as close to Jesus and stay as close to Jesus and walk as close to Jesus as you can possibly walk. And when you do, he will begin to uncover your life. Now, I, I would not be so presumptuous as to say that there's no one in here that feels like you have a ho-hum life. It's likely that we have some in here that you're bored with your life. You feel like you've just been going from here to there and you don't really have a purpose. You don't really know what you're here for. And you're having a ho-hum life. You don't have to stay that way if you will allow Jesus to reveal the greatness that he's put in you. We're going to talk more about those things. So we need to find our purpose and abide in our calling and be what God wants us to be. It is not God's will that we live the life, our life, whatever, however long we have. If we have 15 years, if we have 50 years, if we have 75 years, or even 100. It is not God's will that we live our life on the treadmill of life, just doing the same old thing. Just living so that we can buy food to get the energy, to buy the house, to wear the clothes, to drive the car, to get up and do it again the next day. Life is more than that. Life is more than doing the duties of life. God 
has given his life through the Son, Jesus Christ, so that we can have an abundant life. How many of you believe that God has called and given to us an abundant life, but we have to take a hold of it? And so I'm calling us this morning, through the power of the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, that we take a hold of the abundant life that God has called us to. God wants us to squeeze the sweetness out of life Amen. that He's called us to and that He has given us. How sad that, that God has given all this beauty and wonderful things for us to enjoy and gifts and abilities and we never tap into it and we live our life on barely get along the street. Yeah. That is not God's destiny for any of us. I'm not standing here trying to be unreal and, and act as though every day is just we're rejoicing and happy and singing and, and no bad things ever happen. Of course, we live in a fallen world and things happen. Sometimes people get your parking spot. Sometimes people betray you, they walk out on you. Sometimes people say ugly things about you. Sometimes people do ugly things to you. We all know that. Sometimes we do the same. But God wants us to find our identity. He wants us to find our self-worth in Him. You see, if we get our self-worth from our spouse, from our kids, from our job, from our stuff, all of that can be taken away from us. And then we are left standing. I would say holding the bag, but sometimes holding nothing. Except the bill. You see, you can lose everything. But you cannot lose your soul. If you've got your life hidden with Christ involved. Bank on what is sure. Not on what you can lose. You know sometimes people say. Well I'm going to invest everything into my job. I'm going to invest everything into my family. That won't work. Your job can close tomorrow. Your company can go bankrupt. Your family can walk out, upon you, out on you. They can let you down. They can die. They can also be very faithful to you. But if your identity is in your job, your family, your stuff, all of that can, can go down the drain. But God will never walk out on you. He'll never abandon you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. People can hug us on the outside, but I'm telling you, Jesus can hug you on the inside. Yes. Any of you here today, you need a hug on the inside? Only Jesus can give you that. Yeah. We need to find our purpose. And then we need to walk in the path that God's called us to. Because when we walk in His path, we're walking safely, we're walking securely, we're walking to good and not bad. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 17, I want to talk to you just a wee bit about David. David, who was at this time a shepherd boy, he was the youngest of the sons of Jesse. And David was kind of considered by his brothers as kind of not too significant. <laughs> In fact, they kind of insulted him because David was a dreamer. But how many of you believe God likes dreamers? In fact, I believe God loves dreamers. Do you have a dream? You ought to have a dream. We all ought to have a dream. God will give you a dream. And if you don't have a dream, you need to dream the dream that God gives to you. And if you have a dream other than what God has given to you, then you need to switch dreams. But David had a dream. I believe it was a God-given dream. God had put greatness on the inside of David. Oh, it didn't show while he was necessarily out in the field. Probably nobody but David and God knew about it. You see, David was out in the field, and while he was out in the field protecting his sheep, he was diligent about him with what he was doing. You see, we need to be faithful in the small things and the small positions that we're in. The positions that seem like it's ho-hum is not a big deal. The positions that people don't clap for or recognize. But David was faithful in those little things. The Bible says if you're faithful in those little things, he'll make you ruler over many. If you're faithful in what you're called to, you, he can continue to raise you up. 
Some people don't get raised up because they can't be faithful in the, in the basic, in the minute. And here is David, and his dad told him to go down to his go down to where his brothers were fighting. You see, the, his brothers were in, in the, the Israelite army. And so they were they were out. Actually, they were supposed to be fighting, but they were not fighting. They were kind of standing around, worried because none of them had enough guts to go out and believe in God and believe that God could slay the giant through them. How much do you have? How much faith do you have? You see, here is God's army, and David's brothers were a part of that army. And they're all standing out there, and Goliath's coming out day after day. And day after day, Goliath is ridiculing and mocking the people of God, and not only the people of God, but God. And David, um, David was sent down to take his brothers some food, some cheese and um, some, some fruit and so forth. Well, while David went down to see his brothers, they kind of made a smart remark to him. <coughs> Well, what are you doing leaving those few sheep, boy? I'm paraphrasing. Boy. Listen, if you have your identity in the Lord, it doesn't matter who calls you boy. It doesn't matter when you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing where you are on the way to where you're going. Don't let somebody insult you where you are on the way to where you're going because you're being faithful where you are. Now that's a word for some of us. Right? Some of you know that you call to more. Some of you have God has given you a word. God has spoken to you. And, and right now you're called to be faithful right where you are. Don't worry about the tongues that wag. Just be faithful where you are. That's what David did. And so David was there. You see, God will make the opportunities. You don't have to drive and connive to, to get opportunities so you can show your stuff. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Have you ever seen people drive and connive to try to get opportunities show, to show their stuff, to show how great they are? Yeah. And usually when they do, they fall on their face. Yeah. But I'm telling you, if you will wait on God, God will set you up. And God will not set you up for a failure. He'll set you up for a win. God will set you up and He will bring the host of heaven and the rest of the ones to come and watch you. Praise God. Just be on fire for God and let, let, let them watch you burn. Burn for Jesus Christ. And that was David. So David is out there and here comes Goliath. He's marching in, strutting in, defying the armies of God, defying God himself. And you know what? David was not only surprised, but he was astounded. He thought, what? 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 I thought you guys were out here to fight. No, they were, they were afraid. Why? Because they looked at the natural and they, they saw Goliath as being so big. And David was astounded that no one from the army of God, the army of the God of Israel, who had spoke the world into existence, who had, who had won so many battles for them, David was so surprised that no one from the army of Israel would go out and fight Goliath. You see, David... Because he had been faithful where he was. He had been faithful killing the, the bear and the lion. Pulling that lamb from their mouth. Rescuing that lamb. He, he trusted God. No doubt when David was out there on, the, on the, the, the field. You see, we're in training. You're in training for something greater. Which, where you are now is great. But God's got something greater. You're in training. So David was out there. And no doubt when, when he, he saw the, the lion come and snatch the little lamb, David said, oh God, help me. Oh God, strengthen these hands. And David ran and arose. And he began to fight the lion and the, the bear and take that little lamb. You know how he did it? He knew it wasn't that he was so big. In fact, the, the theologians say David was perhaps even between 8 and 15. We're going to go with 15. Somewhere around 15. 15 years old. Listen, you're not too little to pray a prayer in the use of God. You can do something significant for God. Because God's calling you to greatness. 
And so David would whisper a prayer, Oh God, help me rescue these sheep. And he did. And so when David faced the Goliath, he thought, huh, you ain't nothing for my God. Yeah. Because I've already been practicing with my God. Yeah. You see, what you're doing right now is you're practicing. You are proving. God is showing himself to you. He is revealing himself to you. He is setting you up, not for a failure, not for a fall, but for a win. Don't despise the day of small things. Don't despise this time where you are, you, you feel like, I know God's called me to this and I'm, I'm struggling. Why am I still here? Why am I still doing this? Because God's setting you up for a win. Yeah. God is setting you up. Just take time and invest in yourself with God. Take time to learn God and to know God. And so, so, so David... He is like, what's going to happen to the person who, who kills this Goliath? Well, he found out what was going to happen. Well, he went and gave permission to fight against Israel's enemy. Of course, he got ridiculed by his brothers and probably by others. And people probably thought he was crazy. And uh, even Saul tried to put his own armor on him. But you know what? You don't need to wear somebody else's armor. You don't need to be like somebody else. He didn't need to be a Saul. He needed to be a David. You need to be a you. You need to be who God called you to be. And God's put stuff uniquely in you to be able to fight. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to do it another way. Do it the way God told you to do it. Praise God. And so David went out, and he said to Goliath, you come to me with a sword and a spear. Listen, it's not works that you've done. It's not what you can do. It's what God can do through you. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't that David was such a skillful hunter, being able to sling the stone. But you see, he had practiced. He had practiced. He had done what he could do. But when you do what you can do, God will show you what he will do. Yeah. And God directed that stone right to the very spot that it needed to go in. Even though probably a lot of the rest of it was of him was covered, of Goliath was covered. But God knew the very spot to direct it to. Yeah. It's the same way with you and me. And so David was faithful in what God had given to him. The Bible says that David continued to rise in favor with people in many, in many, and he won many battles. He had people that was jealous of him. Sometimes when God gives you a promotion, people get jealous. You know why people get jealous? Because they're not willing to do what they need to do to be faithful in the few things. Listen, we all, we, God gives us all opportunity. All opportunity to not be to a certain position, but to be who he wants us to be. And God's called every one of us to greatness. You see, God doesn't see greatness the way we see greatness. The greatest person is the person who is flowing in and with what God says at the time God says it. That's the fulfillment of your greatness. And so David continued to rise in favor with people and, with, and he won many battles. He wasn't doing it with an agenda in mind. He was just doing what God called him to as God opened the door. He conducted himself in honor even when, when, when he was accused wrongly by the king. You see, being in God's will doesn't mean that you will not have trials and tests. In fact, the trials and the tests will reveal who you are and what's in you, but it will also reveal where you need to shore up on some things. Do you reckon we might have some areas that we might need to get shored up a little bit? Yeah. See, those trials and those tests will reveal those. Listen, it's better to get it shored up while you're sitting in the pew than it is when you're behind the pulpit. You say, well, you think you don't have anything to shore up? Sure I have. <laughs> but I didn't put myself here either. And that's why I can stand through, through where I am. So David conducted himself in honor. He was faithful to God. He was faithful to others, and not only just for a little while, but he was faithful in for years prior. You see, David knew 
because the prophet Nathan had came and anointed him as king. But it was a long time before he actually got there. That's where some of you are. God's called you to something. You know he's already spoken and given you some specific words. But it, it may not look like that, that things are moving and turning. But that's not your business. Your business is to stay put, do what God says to do, and invest in, in the journey and be faithful right where you are. Now listen, if I didn't say anything else, we could go home and say we had church. Yeah? Yeah. Be faithful. So David was faithful. He was faithful to God. So he was, he was anointed or commissioned by the prophet when he was about age 15. And when he was age 30, according to 1 Samuel 5 and 4, he actually was appointed to the throne. He waited another 15 years before he was actually king over Judah and then another seven years before he was king over the territory of Israel. This means he spent 20, over 20 years being faithfully, uh, being faithful, working in God's open doors and waiting to be in the appointment that God had promised him. And then he reigned 40 years. Listen, if you get, to, if you get there too quick, you might sabotage yourself and others. But if you wait on God, it'll be the right time, the right place. You will have come to full the capacity that God needs you to for that spot. Listen, how many of you, I, I love when it's garden time. We don't get to play in the garden because we don't feel like we have the time. So we use your fruit and vegetables. <laughs> what we buy. But thank you. Um, Paul and Marina really raised some awesome corn this year. And uh, have you ever been so anxious to, you know, to get the, the corn on the cob? And you go, and if you're not, if you're not really astute in uh, wisdom for gardening, you can go and say, hey, it looks pretty good. I've got a beer of corn here. And all you have is mostly husk. You pluck it too, too quickly, you have husk and hair. But if you wait and let it come to the growth and when it's time, you'll have a beautiful ear of corn. I know you're getting hungry right now. You want all your needs butter. <laughs> you see, it's the same way with us. You can have husk and hair or you can have corn. Wait on the Lord. The, the writer says, wait on the Lord. I say, wait on the Lord. Because He will establish your goings. Amen? Amen? So what about the time in between? I want to talk to us about the time in between. Uh, this could be a series, but it's not going to be a series. I don't think. <laughs> hey, I follow day by day. I, I, yeah. No. Some, people, some people plan way out there, and I try to plan, but I'm always up for God changing the plans. There's something about being up for God changing the plans, because sometimes you think you know something, and God changes, and sometimes God wants to know that we're willing to switch. Switch lanes. Listen, are you willing for God to switch your lane? Yeah. He can. Be willing. So what about the in-between? What about the time that, that, that you know God's told you something that you're, that you're, su you're supposed to do and the in-between years? You say, years? I thought it would be weeks, days. Sometimes it's days. Sometimes it's hours. Sometimes it's years. Sometimes it seems like a lifetime. But what about the in-between time? So the first thing, you need to make sure that Jesus Christ is your Lord and your Savior. Make Him the ruler over everything. And then make sure that you are walking as best you know, according to the Word and the Holy Spirit, day by day, each step as you follow Him. Follow Him in obedience. 
Perhaps you have a call and you're not you're not sure um, you're not sure exactly where or uh, you're not in that place yet. But you're walking in obedience in the moment. I want to tell you this morning: don't fret, don't despair, because God has said, "I will I will guide you in the way you should go." How many of you believe that? Amen. God will guide you in the place you need, you need to go. The Lord told me one time. He says, "I've got a mouth." Holy Spirit can speak. You say, well, wait a minute, he's a spirit. Well, the Bible talks about a whole lot hearing the voice. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. So God can, God can speak. We need to be obedient to him. Obedient in the moment. And if we, if we walk every day the way we're supposed to, as best we are deserving the Holy Spirit, submitting our life to him, we will end up where we're supposed to be so that we don't have to fret. Don't have to push any buttons. Don't have to do, do anything except what he tells you to do. Don't fret. Don't get weary. Don't get in despair. And furthermore, don't let people say, well, well, I thought you were. Sometimes people mean well, but they, it feels like a dagger. When you, when you know God's called you to something, but you're kind of, you're kind of, you're kind of working the field where you are, waiting on the corn to do its thing. Don't worry and despair. I feel like that's a word for somebody this morning. Don't worry and get in despair. Don't get weary and well-doing because you will reap if you do not faint. Or if you don't botch it up. Don't botch it up. God is guiding your path and as long as you're walking close to Him in the disciplines He's given you, you will be in the right place at the right time. Yours is to obey and his is to work out the details. You see, what we try to do sometimes is we get into the details. That's God's part. That's God's business. Do what he says. So here is instruction to do what he says. Remember what, what Jesus told Martha when they were there and, and they were going to come in for, for dinner. And uh, Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. She was taking advantage of the opportunity Martha was just scurrying about. She was frustrated and aggravated. We can all, us ladies, can identify with that, unfortunately. But she was frustrated because, you know, stuff wasn't getting done. She was having to do it all. And uh, maybe she wanted to hurry up and get in there, too. I don't know. But she had to get that done first. Now, oh, we like that. Do the first things first. I wonder how much better it would have been if Martha just went in and said to Jesus feet for a while. And then, there's something to that. And then, go to the kitchen. It's amazing how much better your day does when you sit at the feet of Jesus first. When you give Him your first time, your first fruits. And so Jesus told Martha, He said, I know I'm, I'm getting into a, kind of another message, but it's still in this. He says, Martha, one thing is needed. Mary has chose what's the one thing. She's chose the most important thing. So we need to enjoy the journey right where we are, but keep the one thing. Keep the main thing, the main thing. The main thing is keeping your own self right with God. Right? That's the main thing. God forbid we get where we're going and uh, uh, we're not right ourselves. <clears throat> keep the main thing, the main thing. Enjoy where you're going. Keep your spiritual focus. No one talked about in that in between. Joseph waited for 13 years. Abraham waited for 35 years. Moses waited for 40 years. And Jesus waited for 30 years. The list goes up all through the Bible. You can see where God called people and they had to wait. If God's making you wait, you're in good company. If, if, what about this? If you don't feel, what you say, well, what if I don't feel called to a specific? I love God. I pray. I believe God speaks to me, but I just don't feel called to be a, a youth pastor or um, a board member or a, uh, a song leader or whatever, a Sunday school teacher. You just, you just love Jesus, but you don't, you don't feel any of that right now. Some of us, that's where we are. You love Jesus. You're being faithful where you are, but you don't feel that you you don't feel anything that's just driving you to a specific office. What, what about that? You see, not everyone has the same earth-shaking experience 
and their purpose or their call. Some calls seem to come naturally and gradually without the trumpet blast or the strong emphasis and the individual finds enjoyment and fulfilling and serving in general areas. Guiding the home, working their job, serving in the community and serving in the church as opportunities come up, they're a helper. That doesn't mean you, you're less than somebody else. I, 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 I refrained from doing this, but I wanted to put up a picture of um, too many chiefs and not enough Indians. Um, Y'all with me? What in the world would we be if we were a bunch of uh, leaders with that was just teachers, pastors, um, you know, men's director, women's director, food pantry coordinator, uh, you know, video, and what if what would we be if we didn't have other helpers? The church would be in a mess. We all it's all of our hands coming together, right? So sometimes it, it's just it's doing what your hand finds to do. It's doing what's natural. You're fulfilled. You're, you're content. And, and sometimes when you hear a, a message about somebody telling about their calling, sometimes you sit on the pew and you think, well, what's the matter with me? I must be. No. You, you are precious in God's sight and you're just as valuable. Every member of the body is valuable. You may feel like you're just a little toe, but the little toe is necessary. Amen. We all are placed in the body as it pleases God. If I'm not called to a specific ministry, does it mean that I'm inadequate or have missed God's voice? No. But we should be faithful following and helping in whatever ways we can. Much ministry that is done without the, the outside walls. God help us if, if we think ministry only is in the church house. We're ministering to the body of Christ and those who happen to come. I'm going to tell you, it's a whole lot more out there than it is in here. How many of you know that? Can I say that again? There's a whole lot more out there than there is in here. And we're not going to just confine our work to what's inside these four walls and what has to do with necessarily even these four walls. So we're, we are to be faithful outside the church walls. Working in our neighborhood, working and witnessing on our job, in our school. Whether we're a teacher, a, a principal, a lawyer, a doctor, a nurse, a homemaker, a mama, or work for a business, whatever. God needs witnesses everywhere. Not everyone's going to enter these church doors. You understand that? Unless you help break them. So don't feel that you're less than because... You're not called to look like somebody else. Again, the, the scripture says, whatever your, call, your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. I'm thankful that, that for some of us, and especially, especially when it's a, a hard call, and especially when it seems like very unnatural, for me, when, when I received my call to preach, it was a trumpet blast. You know why? Because God knew I was going to have to have that to get this little girl off from under the bed. Hiding. Hiding away. And also, so that I could stick with it when things got tough. Because most of us pastors think, you know what? We could be a real good member supporting a great pastor. And just, just work in the, the sidelines and, 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 the, and the shadows. And, and we, could, we could just be a great great if God will allow us. But when, when the call, when the call is there, and it's to that, to that point, God, let, God can let you know. If God's calling you to something like that, He can let you know. For me, I had to know. I want to just tell you, and I don't want to take the, the time to read all this, but 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 20. 28 through 31 talks about there's there's uh, people that he's placed in the church first apostles second prophets third teachers those who do miracles those who have the gift of healing those who help others those who help others those who help others that's not just preachers that's not just ministry leaders it's all of us 
All of us, we have a job to do. Those who help others. So we earnestly desire to be most helpful in our gifts. And then the next thing I want to talk to you about is, so what if I really believe God has called me to do something, but the doors are not open? And I don't have the blessing of those over me in the Lord. Well, it's like this. Um, the gifts are evident to the body of Christ. If you're the only one that thinks you have a gift and a calling, and that continues on and on and on, uh, and nobody else sees it, it's not manifest in any way, then you might question, is the call real? So what if I believe God has called me to do something, but the doors are not opening? Maybe he has. But it's up to God to open those doors. If God's called me to do something and, I, and the doors are not opening and I don't have the blessings of those over me in the Lord, what will I do? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't try to jump from being a novice to a, to, into immediate ministry because it won't work. What is a novice? It's someone who has not yet been proved. It's someone who, who has not went through the trials and the tests and at the, where the body has recognized their gifting. Now, God, we don't place people in the body with the gifts and callings, but God does. What we do is simply recognize it. When I came in this morning, I greeted Sister Jody, and she was like, wow, I'm really getting excited about the, this women's ministry thing. Look at her. She's happy. She's, it's, it is, it is a, a fermenting in her, her. It is rising on the inside of her. Why? Because God had the call, and I recognized it before she did. Because I felt like God spoke to me for Jody to serve in the women's ministry. And so I mentioned to her, I want you to think about it. Uh, I don't think she was too thrilled about it. And I kind of left it alone. And then God began to work. And now she's just, she's like, she was thinking she was going to wait till later, but I'm kind of thinking she might not. Oh. Um, yeah. You see, when the calling is there, God shows it to other people, right? It's like this. If I thought I was really called to sing, and I'm up here singing, and you're back there, oh God, oh Jesus. <laughs> and the dogs are high howling. <laughs> I'm just kidding, nobody's calling me that bad. I, I just said that to say, if, if, if it's your call, God will confirm it, right? Some are called to do uh, great things, but unless they are faithful in the few things and the basic things, they'll never make it to the more weighty offices. So people are wondering why they are sitting when the gods, they know God's called them. And I'm not, I'm not trying to put a guilt trip on anybody. And I'm not trying to even say that there's anybody here, but I'm just saying this is a principle. We don't jump from being a novice to an immediate ministry, especially a full-time ministry. Some are called to do great things, but unless we're faithful in a few of the basic things, they'll never make it to the more weighty ministry. Um, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5 says, If you've run with a footman and they've tired you out, then how can you compete with horses? If you fall down in the land of peace, how will you do in the thicket of Jordan? Some people think, oh yeah, I'm able. And they have no clue. Yeah. The burden of the Lord, of the work, in some offices, we have to have built spiritual muscles for it. Do you understand what I'm saying? There are some things that, some things in some ministries that you get into, you better know God's called you. And you better know that you have, you have uh, went through the trials and the test and you're equipped and, and it's there and that you can be able to do it. If you're struggling even, even walking, uh, running with a footman here in the lesser or less weighty, how in the world can you do if you get in some positions? You know what I'm saying? So it's great to aspire to big things. Maybe, maybe we're even called. 
but don't surpass God's timing. You see, God has a time for us. In 1 Timothy, and I'm going to try to read all those scriptures, but you can take down 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 13. It would be great for you to read this week for your devotions. <coughs> Paul talks about, he wrote to Timothy, and he talks about, if a man aspire to the office of an overseer, it's a fine work that he does. An overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, temperate, prudent, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, and not addicted to wine, or pugnacious, but gentle, uncontentious, free from the love of money, Uncontentious, free from the love of money. Uncontentious, free from the love of money. Uncontentious. You know, if somebody's contentious, they don't need to be in the... Yeah. He must be one that manages his own household well. He don't whip up on his wife or uh, beat on his kids and uh, cuss and rage. No. If he is, you know, maybe he's saved, but he's not yet... Um, Learn how to control those things. It would be a horrible thing to get in a position of, uh, of, of leadership, and especially a high position of leadership, and be doing like that. If a man doesn't know how to manage his own household, how the world's going to take care of the church of God? I put the world in there, didn't I? And not a new convert, lest he be conceited. Not a, not a novice, not a new convert, lest he be conceited. You say, well, I've been serving the Lord for ten years. What does that have to do? You know, God's got 40-year-old babies still in the church. Wine, wine, wine. And you know what? You have to give them a bottle every now and then. <laughs> That's the truth. I'm not against babies. we got some babies here. But sometimes you got to give them a bottle. you got to coddle them and whatever. And, um, uh, uh, I'm just saying <laughs> Not a novice. I love babies. I even love 40-year-old babies. <laughs> but a 40-year-old baby don't need to be in a high position in leadership because they can make a mess. In fact, they can make a big mess. So not a new convert lest he become conceited and fall into condemnation incurred by the devil. You know, sometimes the Lord holds us back because we're not ready for it. It, might, it would be a dangerous thing to put us in a place where um, he has not trained us and equipped us. You see, God trained David through a lot of years. Through a lot of hardship. He had the ridicule of his brothers. When he had the ridicule of his brothers, later on he could, he could still do what's right later on. He could hear the ridicule of the people who were ridiculing him and even the king that was out to, to kill him. And he could still hold his head up and do what's right. Listen, some people were so thin-skinned, they never make it in leadership. When, leader, when you're a leader, you're going to have to have the skin of a rhinoceros. Yeah. Yeah. And a belly of a goat, because you have to swallow, swallow a lot of crow. <laughs> Talking about deacons, by the way, we'll be electing uh, some one or two, I'm not sure how many this, this year, coming up in March. But he says, uh, let them first be tested. If we keep failing the test, then we're going to have to keep taking it until we can pass it and then we can move on. Let them first be tested. Then let them serve as deacons if they are beyond reproach. Women are uh, also to be dignified, not malicious gossipers. Well, that'd be all we need. I'm thankful that God has blessed us that gossip is very minimal as far as I know here. As far as I know here. Gossip is very minimal here, but it ain't a lot of places. Usually gossips don't last too long here to stay true. We're to be temperate in all things. And so forth. Okay. Now, don't mistake and talk about your calling and what do you want. Don't mistake, make the mistake of comparing your life calling with that of others. You've heard that all through this message. Be who you are and who God asks you to be. And just be content. Are you content? Even though you may know God's called you to something, you feel it. Most anything that I've done through the years, especially if it's 
if it's large in the kingdom of God. And I'm talking about offices that I've filled. Most of them, if not all of them, probably all of them, because I have to know it's God. I've had to go through some things, and I've had to, God has worked on me to know ahead of time. Sometimes years in advance. I feel things right now that God has put in my heart, things I feel like God has told me. And I'm just trying to be faithful, doing what I'm supposed to do today. Being faithful. And uh, I don't want to be where God didn't call me to be. How scary. It is a scary thing to be where God hasn't called you to be. Because if you know God's called you and you're faithful right where you're supposed to be, it's okay. When the, when the lion and the bear comes to, to try to get one of the lambs, I know because God's called me, I know I can rescue the lamb from the bear. Because He's called me, He's anointed me, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So don't make the mistake of comparing your life with others. Usually there's levels of ministry where a person grows and gains the confidence and endorsement of their, fear, of their peers. Someone has said, if you, if you think you're a leader and no one is following you, you're only taking a walk. <laughs> he who walks will be taken uh, in a way that will profit. If you walk with the Lord, you'll be taken in a way that will profit you and your calling and others. You see, God can and will get you where you need to be. You don't have to do the pushing, the politicking that is so ugly. Politicking is ugly. I, um, I don't think we have it here. If we do, I'm blind to it and don't see it. And I think probably I probably could see it if, if it was there. But I don't see politicking and pushing and uh, pleading. We don't have to beg and plead or manipulate anything. I don't, you know, I don't see that in our district. Thank God. But I know it does exist. Places and... and um, but if we just focus on God, doing what we're supposed to be, get, be content. Can we just decide to be content? God will speak to someone besides us if, it, if He's put a calling on us. He'll speak to us, but He'll speak to other people too. It doesn't mean that you're not to share your heart and get counsel. Quite the opposite. What it does mean is that you're to make yourself available and to be content in sitting or working. I remember the last, the last or the one before that on the, my presbytery uh, report, my presbyter report. I I wrote in there before my pastor. I'm I am willing to to stand or sit. He doesn't need somebody running ahead of him. I'm under his authority, and if he tells me to sit down, I'm gonna sit down. If he tells me to stand up, I'm gonna stand up. If he tells me to. To go somewhere or not go somewhere, that's what I'm going to do. You say, well, you're trying to make him your God. No, he's my leader. And if we can't be under authority, we, have, we are not fit to be over authority. Right. And some people need to learn that. Right. Amen? So we, we need to make ourselves available, but be contented. Don't get an attitude. If somebody hadn't told you to stand up, don't get an attitude. Just be thankful you've got some more time to invest in you. Focus on your spiritual growth. Because you know what? A baby that is born premature is very vulnerable and it can die. A ministry that's born prematurely has to have a whole lot of coddling and it can die. It can, it can uh, just, just fall. So, so I'm asking you, what do you want? What do you want? What good desire has God given you? What is it that you're passionate about? What is it that you live and die for? If you invest in your who, do you invest in your who more than your do? I know that's not good, man. Do you invest in your who more than your do? Reasons why promotion or open door is not happening. Let me just try to try to finish this up really quickly. Um, the pause button may be pushed if our life is not in order. The pause button may be pushed 
uh, if we've not passed the maturity test. If we're paralyzed by fear or timidity and self-doubt and we don't take the necessary steps, like speak to those over us and say, this is what I'm feeling, would you pray about it? It may, be, it may mean make an application. You may, feel, you may feel something on your job. You may, and it could be ministry, it could be in the church, it could be on your job. You may feel something and, and you may feel that, you know, I really need to go talk to my boss. And God's really prompting you to, but you, you say, well, no, no, um, I'm not going to do that. And you sit down and you're timid. Well, you know what? Pastor Dennis, my former superintendent, used to say, you can't drive a parked car. Now, I'm not contradicting what I've already said, but I'm saying there are times that you, God gives you something to do and you can sit on it and the pause button is pushed on your promotion or ministry or whatever it is. So do what God says. I'm, I'm skipping over some stuff. I would like to. Mm, I, I'd like to. I like to just, I'd like to finish this, but I'm not going to be able to. If you're faithful in a few things, God's going to make a ruler over many. Jesus talked about some that was given five talents, two talents, one talent. The one that received five talents, he doubled it. The one that received two talents, doubled it. The one that received one talent said, well, I was afraid. God rewarded the ones that had, had been diligent with what they had. I guess a lot of the message this morning is be diligent with what you've got. And if you hide your talent, if you hide your gift, if you're not faithful in the small things, who's going to trust to you great things? God won't. If you're not faithful where you are. And the last scripture again I'm going to read and I've referred to it throughout this message. And you can thank me that I skipped over almost half of the message. <laughs> Maybe it was to me. Ecclesiastes 9.10 Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, all your might. For there is no activity or planning or knowledge or wisdom in Shia where you're going. Whatever you're going to do, right, you need to do it now for the Lord. Be faithful right where you are. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want for your life? Do you want to keep living the way, the way you are? Well, has God given you a goal? Has God given you a dream? Be faithful. Don't be discouraged. Discouragement takes a hold of all of us. But let that dream be revived in you. I know in here this morning, God has people that has greatness in them. But it's not only in here. It's people that's walking the streets, people that's sitting in bars, people that's laid up this morning with a hangover, people that's shooting up and doing all kinds of things. There's many people that God has a calling on and he has great gifts in them. But they'll never reach their potential. Some of those people will never accomplish what God's given them to do. That's sad. That's a sad commentary. What about you? Will you reach what God's called you to do? To be? Will you become the person that God has called you to be? When you're finishing your time, will you be able to say, it's been a good journey. <coughs> I fought a good fight. If I died today, I could say, it's been a great journey. You say, well, Pastor, you say you don't have any regrets. You didn't ever mess up. Yeah, I messed up. I have some regrets. 
but a stuck to the task. If you fall down, you just get back, you repent and you get back up. And you learn the lesson. Everybody's fallen and come short of God's glory. But you don't have to stay there. God so wants, and He's calling us to arise to the greatness that He's given to us. What about you? What do you want? You can make this day the very best day of your life if you don't know Jesus. If you have not, if you have not completely surrendered your life to God, why don't you do that? He will give you the best possible life and the most happiness and joy. He can do better with you than you can do with yourself. He can build you and make you and fashion you and form you because He knows what's on the inside of you. I had no idea of some of the stuff that God had inside of me. I had absolutely no idea. Some of it I keep uncovering as I walk with God because there's, time, there's stuff in you that, that from time to time God will show you another gift, another ability He's put inside of you. Are you with me? I want you to hear this. Some of you, God has got stuff in you. You have absolutely no idea. If you knew where you would be in 10 years, it would absolutely blow your mind. Sometimes to the good, sometimes to the bad, depending on the choices you make. What do you really want? What do you really want? The first part of this, this call is I'm asking you, do you need to, to come forward? And I know we've already given that opportunity, but I feel to do it again. Do you need to come forward and say, I want to serve Jesus, and I want the best possible life for me to be able to be filled with love and joy and excitement? You can get up every morning as excited as I am. That doesn't mean everything is, you know, that don't mean you don't have any bills or stuff. But you see, God's greater than, than all that stuff. You can get up every morning excited about the journey. And have that sweetness of God. What do you want? Do you want that? Is there anybody in here that, that you, just, you just need to say, you know what, I need to come and make Jesus my Lord. Or I need to come and recommit my, myself to the Lord to get me on the right track. I love Him. I'm, I'm, I'm saved, but I'm not on the right track. Anybody in here need to get on the right track? Some area in your life you need to get on the right track so that you can, you can move down the road that God's called you to, to the greatness. Find and uncover the giftedness inside of you. Y'all are way too quiet this morning. Holy Spirit's moving, so I want you to move. I'm going to ask you to stand up. If you need to, if you need to, if you need to just, just, Recommit your life to Jesus this morning. Say, I, I want to be in the sweet spot that the Lord's called me to. Or you want to commit to the Lord. Maybe it's the first time giving your heart to Him. The altar is open. Let me have some of the ministers and board members come up here.